Hey guys, welcome back to Top 10 Nerd, I'm Rob McKenzie LaFergie. We've talked a heck of a lot about comic book villains here at Top 10 Nerd, but not all villains have their start in comics. There's some pretty great shows and movies out there with some pretty awesome villains. So let's talk about some of my faves. Make sure to thumbs up and subscribe to the channel down below if you like this video. Now get ready, it's time for the Top 10 Super Villains, not from comic books. Number 10. Dr. Horrible. Dr. Horrible is the villainous protagonist of Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, the amazing miniseries that was created during the 0708 writer's strike. Played by Neil Patrick Harris, Dr. Horrible was a relatively new villain trying to impress Bad Horse to earn a spot in the evil League of Evil. His special weapon is a freeze ray that allows him to freeze time around him, not to be confused with an ice beam that's so Johnny Snow. Seriously, if you haven't watched Dr. Horrible, do it. It has Nathan Fillion and Felicia Day, it's hilarious, and it's a musical. And Neil, if you're watching this, hit me up if you make a sequel, I'm powerfully mediocre. Number 9. Syndrome from The Incredibles Buddy Pine was a normal boy without superpowers who begged Mr. Incredible to be his sidekick. And he said no because he was a kid and he would definitely die. But he used his scientific mind to become the supervillain Syndrome and came back with a whole whack of gadgets. He built a super robot and tested it with a bunch of other supers before using it on Mr. Incredible himself. And then stuff happened and he got wrecked. Dude, I am so ready for the sequel, it's finally happening. Thank God. Number 8. No Heart from Care Bears. Ah, Care Bears. Now there's a show that I have no desire whatsoever to watch anymore. That said, I freaking loved it as a kid and No Heart was a pretty good villain. Sure, he was stereotypical and inexplicably relied on his terrible niece Shrieky and the even more terrible Beastly, but six-year-old Ron thought he was pretty cool because he could do magic and magic is cool. Number 7. Phil Ken 7 from Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law. Phil isn't necessarily a villain per se, he's just Harvey's jerk of a boss. But he did run over a bunch of people and treats his employees terribly, so he's villainous enough as far as I'm concerned. He's constantly trying to mess with Birdman and always looking for double entendres to laugh at. Plus, he's voiced by Stephen Colbert, which is even better. <laughs> he reminds me so much of Barry from Archer, it's not even funny. Except, it is funny. It's really funny. Number 6. Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget Ah yes, the villain veiled in mystery known for his fluffy cat and gravelly voice. We rarely see any more of Dr. Dr. Claw than his arm, and it's normally him shaking it and saying, I'll get you next time, Gadget. His plans are constantly foiled by Inspector Gadget, making him think Gadget is actually a genius, when really it's just Penny and Brain doing everything. Also, you know what I just realized? He doesn't have a claw. All we see is his arm, and he has a seemingly normal hand. My memory totally screwed with me. I could have sworn he was like Captain Hook and was named Claw because he had a claw hand. Maybe I was just thinking of the movie? Uh, it's weird. Number 5. The Terminator. Now, this one's a bit wonky since the Terminator actually spends more time in the films as a hero than a villain, but when we first saw him, he was an awesome baddie. Before he was the governator, Arnold Schwarzenegger provided us with the awesome cyborg assassin. He was sent back from 2029 to 1984 to kill Sarah Connor to prevent her son from saving humanity from the machines. He ultimately fails the mission given to him by Skynet, but he makes a damn good show of it. And the scene where he's naked makes me feel so damn inadequate. Number 4. Megatron This one's a bit different because it began not with a comic book or a show, but with a toy. Jim Shooter and Dennis O'Neill of Marvel fame were hired to create backstories for the characters and they ended up creating Megatron to be the main villain. The toys were accompanied by both a Marvel comic series and a cartoon, but they were basically there to sell more toys. And understandably, the evil leader of the Decepticons was a pretty popular character. My favorite version is the T-Rex Megatron from Beast Wars, or Beasties to my fellow Canadians, but that's just because I like Beasties a lot more than regular Transformers. Let me know which you like better in the comments. Number 3. Sauron No, not the comic Sauron, I'm talking Lord of the Rings. I'm a giant Tolkien fan, so I'll take any excuse I can get to talk about Lord of the Rings. Sauron was originally one of the Maya, essentially the angels of Middle-earth. However, he was corrupted by the evil Morgoth and went on to take over Middle-earth with the help of the One Ring. Sauron is no joke. While we mostly just saw him as a big eye in the films, back in his prime he was basically Batman the Merciless in Middle-earth. Who's Batman the Merciless? Check out our video on the channel! Number 2. Dr. Evil Dr. Evil is probably one of my favorite villains of all time. Played beautifully by Mike Myers, he's just the perfect parody of supervillainy. Despite his great success, he seems to be horrifically incompetent. Whether he's losing control of his swivel chair or getting smacked in the nards by a meteor, what he lacks in competence he makes up for in slapstick hilarity. And if Dr. Evil's on here, I have to include his inspiration. Number 1. Ernst Blofeld Blofeld is the definitive Bond villain. So popular that he was essentially carbon copied in the Austin Powers 
Powers movies. He's been played by a whole whack of people, but the most famous portrayal is probably Donald Pleasance. When first introduced in the film, he was a classic villain in a swivel chair, fluffy cat, and wicked eye scar. And although his looks have changed over the years, he's always the same ruthless badass. That's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please smack that thumbs up button and subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more videos. Which of these villains was your fave? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know if you want a part two because this was so fun to do and I'd love to talk about other non-comic villains. Until next time, I'm Ron McKenzie-Lafergie with Top 10 Nerd. Later, nerds.